In 2012, Team USA with one of the best rosters ever beat Nigeria by 83 points. In 2021, Team USA played Nigeria again and lost. Just two weeks ago, they didn't even get a medal in the FIBA World Cup. They lost to Canada? Nah, we lost to Dylan Brooks going off for 39 to eliminate us? What the hell? No freaking way. Who was on the roster? Oh, before 2021, USA Basketball had only 5 losses in 85 years. 3 of those losses happened in 2004, the worst performance in USA Basketball history. So when Team USA loses in basketball, it's a big deal. This year, Team USA lost 3 times. And in 2021, Team USA lost twice with a roster of Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard, Booker, Tatum. This year we got punked. Tough. Team USA's insurmountable gap in international basketball is vanishing, and it's our fault. Doesn't make it any better that Noah Lyles is out here saying this. World champion of what? While that has rallied several players into saying that they will play for the Olympics, out here assembling the Avengers, we're still in danger of somehow getting worse. I'm gonna outline the three pieces that absolutely need to be fixed for Team USA Basketball to get back on track. Especially piece number two because that's something that everyone has forgotten about. What is up dudes to that spawners players? It's your boy MJ. If you take a look at the roster this year, not a single player had ever been part of a World Cup or Olympics before and only had three NBA All-Stars in total. Anthony Edwards was our best individual player and that's part of piece number one. Players are more concerned with resting than representing the country. This isn't necessarily new and is part of one of the worst losses in US history. In 2004, USA's roster looked like this. LeBron, Carmelo, Tim Duncan, D. Wade, AI. Looks like a strong team, right? Not exactly. Not only had none of these players but three played any international games, LeBron, Melo, Wade had been in the NBA for one year. In fact, none of these were the first options for Team USA and I'll let Richard Jefferson, who was on the team, explain. The US f***ed it up. Let's break it down. We had 12 guys on a team. We played Argentina in Puerto Rico to qualify for the finals. Let's talk about those guys on the team. Ray Allen, Vince Carter, Mike Bibby, Jason Kidd. Carl Malone was on there. He had a death in his family, he had to leave. I believe Kenyon Martin, Kobe was gonna be on it, but he had, he had some things that he was dealing with. T-Mac was on that team. I was just there as the quote unquote USA select guy. We weren't gonna play, we were just there. The next year, nine of those 12 players say no they're not going to the Olympics after qualifying. Then they asked 30 guys and they all said no. And so Tim Duncan was also on that team. So then after they don't have 30 guys say no, they field the youngest roster that they ever have of a bunch of players with zero international experience or very little international experience. LeBron, D Wade, Amari, Carmelo, all these guys, all of these guys were then added onto the team. And I went from a guy that didn't play to a starter in the Olympics. I didn't play the year before. RJ is pissed. Uh. And that year, USA walked away with a bronze medal. Their worst finish in Olympic basketball since they allowed pros to compete. But what just happened this year is not that much different. We went from this to this. Bruh. Yeah, this time it wasn't due to injuries that some of the best players had. No, the best players just said no. Rather, the offseason is for rest, and that's fair, especially if you had a deep playoff run. But not every star had a deep playoff run. We're in the age of load management. Players are already seeing out NBA games, voluntary extra games seems far fetched. In 2019, LeBron, Curry, Kawhi, Harden, everyone said no for the World Cup. They're there was only one all-NBA player on the roster. Kevin Durant, Paul George, Lillard, Bam, everyone said no this year, leading to a roster with no all-NBA players and filled with several first-time international players. And that led to several blown coverages and bad defense like this. Oh. There he goes! Oh! 
I mean, damn. Throughout the tournament, Team USA wasn't convincing and lost three times in eight games. From 2008 to 2019, Team USA did not lose a single game. The past four years, they've lost six. But when it looked like Team USA had lost its way in 2004, sure they would assemble amazing talent, but they brought in one guy that would entirely change the program and their preparation. And that was Coach K. And that was piece number two. Having a strong leader who kept the program stable. It all changed one day during the 2006 FIBA World Cup in Japan when Coach Mike Krzyzewski was coaching Team USA for the very first time. And it didn't go nearly as expected. Well, at least for the players, namely guys like LeBron and Dwight Howard. You see, during an exhibition game versus Lithuania, Coach K absolutely obliterated Dwight Howard for dozing off on defense and how he was defending the pick and roll. And Dwight Howard, a bona fide star and probably the best center in the NBA at the time, did not like it. According to Shane Battier, who was also on the team, Dwight had a look on his face like, do you know who the hell I am? After Coach K yelled at him. But that's who the man was. He did not care who you were or how accomplished you were, even if you were the biggest name in the basketball world like LeBron. Cause Coach K called out LeBron and Carmel Anthony for dress code and wearing headphones in public. LeBron said, man, we didn't do things like that in Cleveland. D Wade said, you don't have to be that strict. We're grown men. And one day in practice, LeBron, who's notorious for not trusting coaches, let alone college coaches, walked out of a team drill while Coach K was addressing the team. Yeah, but the man did not let it slide. He pulled LeBron to the side after practice and told him straight to his face, look at me, we need to have eye to eye contact. And according to one Team USA official, that was the first time LeBron was talk to like that. And that changed everything. In 2007, Team USA would have a scrimmage with their full roster, a duel between LeBron and Kobe, in which Kobe hit a game winner a whole year before the Olympics. The main players were set, not some random last minute team. But no, it didn't end there because Coach K took Kobe aside one day when they were watching film on their games and said to the best player in the world, those were some BS shots directly questioning Kobe's shot selection, and Kobe responded with a simple, okay, I got you, coach. Coach K was not afraid of anything. He wanted to hold players accountable. He wanted to set the culture that was clearly missing for several years. But you might be thinking to yourselves, how did this all work out if players clearly weren't really liking the treatment that Coach K gave him? So he asked one thing from every player to change the entire program. And what players thought of it. He said, I want to go around this room and I want to hear from each one of you and you guys are going to define the standards of what you'll accomplish here. I as a coach will make sure you live up to those standards. He brought in army vets to talk about the mentality of serving the country, establishing leadership roles. Team USA went from being a group of fancy showmen to a determined bunch that want to play for each other. Starting with the top with Kobe saying, coach, I'll do anything you want if you want me to take the last shot, I'll do it. If you want me to guard the best player, I'll do it. LeBron said Team USA had to be a no excuse ball club in order to win it all. Even guys like D Wade who were coming off the bench told the team that we have to play for each other. And then came 2008, a new era, new time. What we famously remember as the Redeem Team. It had been two years now since Coach K was introduced, the stage was set, and the players were locked in. Coach K appointed Kobe and LeBron as the leaders of the team, and Kobe made his mission to one-up his coach in competitiveness. Diving on the floor in practice, intense defense, it set the tone for the rest of the guys on the roster. Team USA would steamroll the competition. In their first four games to start the tournament, they had a point differential of 112. This wasn't a team that lost by 19 points to Puerto Rico in their first tournament game in 2004. And in the finals, in 2008 in Beijing, LeBron said, Bob said he gonna set the tone and start the game. He said, that if I'm running through pile and chess. And he did. Damn. 
I mean, this all looked and felt different. The polar opposite of the USA team that just went 5-3 in 2019. This 2008 team was a team that reestablished itself as the scariest squad on the entire planet. They won the gold medal. And by the time the 2012 Olympics rolled around in London, it was now business as usual. And the players not only backed him, but looked up to him and formed a special bond. That's why newcomers in 2012 like Kevin Durant said about Coach K, he's putting emphasis on team first and sacrificing for your country. Once you hear that, you automatically want to play. And that wasn't an overstatement. It's why guys like Paul George happily came back to the Olympic stage in 2016, even after snapping his lower leg in half just two years earlier. Even guys who are notorious for being hard to coach in the NBA like DeMarcus Cousins and Draymond Green couldn't wait to play in their first Olympics. And a lot of times, these stars would have their best NBA season right after playing in the Olympics. 2016 might have been Coach K's last year on the Olympic stage, but he didn't go out without helping deliver a third straight gold medal. No LeBron, no Kobe, no D-Wade, no CP3, no problem. But you see, the rest of the world was slowly catching up in talent of their own. Coach K retired after 2016, but with the game on the international level cared more so to chemistry, camaraderie, and collective defense, Team USA has since struggled with the X's and O's and the foundational aspect of the game. The chemistry and attitude Coach K instilled is now more crucial than ever, and it's missing. It's not a matter of the rest of the world catching up to US, it's that the rest of the world has been caught up for quite some time. Those were the words of Kobe Bryant going back to 2019 when Team USA strung together some L's in the FIBA games. And that's piece number three. Competition is much more difficult now, the game is more international. It's not just Kobe that was saying this, many people were beginning to think this way after US failed to bring home gold in the last two FIBA World Cups and barely eked in a gold medal after a historically rocky start to the 2020 Olympics. The rest of the world was battle tested, teams featured the perfect blend of talent and pieces that worked one another, players that were part of the programs for years. It's not a coincidence that a team with Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard, Jason Tam and them were at the center of the US's first Olympic loss in 25 games. After 17 years, it wasn't an accident. Team USA just looked shakier and shakier as the stakes grew bigger and bigger. In fact, Ricky Rubio, who's been a constant force on the international stage, stated that the paint is more collapsed. Hand checks are called differently in the NBA than FIBA, physicality, it's played different. It's not just the rules, but the role they have with the team. Remember when the players were complaining about foul calls? Post up Durant. And, and everyone roasted them, saying that they preferred Olympic basketball versus the weak calls in the NBA. Yeah, Team USA was outscored 16-2 over the closing minutes of the ball game, while France looked like a weld oil machine on both ends with all their players in sync. Team USA, though they had the better talent, scored just 11 points in the third quarter, proving that talent can only take you so far. It's why Luke said scoring is easier in, in NBA just because of the amount of the different rules the less space the time so that's why I said it it's, it's harder to score 30 points in a, in a EuroLeague game than it is in an NBA game yeah 100% why do you think guys like Evan Fournier who looks like just another guy in the NBA look like one of the most skilled players in the world in the 2020 Olympics that's because iso ball is non-existent in a functional offense on the Olympic stage that style of play was something Team USA struggled to deal with. It doesn't help that the NBA and international basketball are played differently. There's no three second rule so teams can pack the paint which means you really need to rely on ball movement to exploit openings. More physicality, less calls, it's pure basketball. And then there's what Greg Popovich even admitted when the US was embarrassed by Nigeria in their pre-Olympic exhibition. That's not a bunch of people off the streets playing basketball 
every year teams are better and better and every year more NBA players are on their teams. Just look at this past season's MVP race. All three finalists are foreign born. If we backtrack to 2008, there were just 17 NBA players that played internationally, but not for Team USA. In 2016, that number grew so much that now just two of the 12 competing teams in the Rio Olympics didn't have at least one NBA player on their roster. So what's the solution? In 2020, 78.2% .2 of the league was still from the US. So assembling talent is great. It's the prerequisite. It's still the US's greatest strength. But if you don't have some stability, oh, he needs some milk. It's like starting a new team from scratch, making a run at a championship. The formula the US used a couple of years ago was actually perfect. Have the team mostly of stars and have a few young upcoming players that you want to be on the team for years. But perhaps most importantly and overlooked, we need a moving leader. While players respect Rick Popovich and while he makes the most logical sense, Popovich has always been a strict dictator of sorts. Personalities have died on the Spurs. I'm a fun guy. They then replaced him with Steve Kerr, who isn't the best at adjusting on the fly and may not be commanding the respect of the players. I mean, he had Jaron Jackson Jr. at the five when JJJ is a four with poor rebounding. What the hell is going on? And while Team USA was struggling defensively and giving up boards, no change was made. Ooh. Finding a coach who is able to handle several personalities while still being respected and listened to is tough. But there's one easy choice, and that's Eric Spolster, who has made literally any squad, whether it's filled with stars or filled with undrafted players, get to the finals. So Team USA, get it done. This is exactly what I've been waiting for. Commitment is what's missing. Team USA needs players who are committed to playing year in and year out. The all day notification watch shout goes to Christian Morgan. Thanks for the all day support. If you want to know if JR Smith was actually banned from the NBA, there's a video right here. And if he's still here, you will want to comment redeem so I know. It's your boy MJ. We out and we vibe.